Today I'm making strawberry rhubarb crisp. It's a throwback for anybody that comes from the north. This time of year, the rhubarb is coming up and it spreads pretty quickly in people's yard, their gardens. If you're looking to find it, sometimes it's hard to find in stores. Call ahead, Fresh Market, I found out, has been carrying it and you'll need about four cups for this recipe. So when you get the stalks, what you want to do is you want to clean them really well. Clean them as if they were a potato because they're in the ground. So they're going to have a lot of sandy dirt on them. Wash them really well, cut off the ends, and then you can chop them up. I've added some raspberries to the strawberries as well because raspberries were on sale. I think you're going to love this recipe. It's pretty easy, and it screams of summertime. So I've already sliced the strawberries in half, obviously washed them, and like I mentioned, I have some beautiful raspberries because they were on sale. So I decided to add it in the rhubarb. I cut, washed the rhubarb. Remember I said wash it very well. It's going to be very sandy. And then I cut it up into chunks. We're going to spray an uh, 8 by 11 inch pan. Then we're going to do, oh, about two tablespoons of orange zest. And the orange is really appealing in this because it just makes a little pop. You don't want it too sweet from the berries. And of course, the rhubarb is a very tart, gives it a tangy, so this is going to give it a balance out. What we're going to do is we're going to add three quarters of a cup of sugar into the berry and the rhubarb mixture. So there we go. That almost makes, there we go, three quarters of a cup, okay, great, of your standard white granulated sugar. And then we're going to mix in, we're going to put that all in, and the pan's big enough, we've sprayed it with food spray. Underneath it, I have parchment paper. In case this does bubble, what happens is that the fruit almost makes a syrup, and what I don't want it to do is to ruin your cookie sheet. This is a great way when you're making pies and crumbles and cobblers is to keep that parchment paper underneath on a pan so it can just catch everything. So now we're going to mix this. Make sure that rhubarb, it's not just layers of it. It's really mixed in with the berries. So every bite you get some of the tart, you get the berries and that orange zest. That's going to be perfect. Now let's come over here and I have a tablespoon of cornstarch. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and add about, oh, about three quarters of a cup of fresh squeezed orange juice. And I usually just use the juice from the oranges that I've been zesting. And this is going to make what we call a slurry. Now this is going to go right into our fruit mixture and we're going to stir that around some more. You don't have to cook it at all because it's going to bake as all the crumble bakes in the oven. So give it a good stir. And this should be just about ready to go. This is also a great dish when you use an individual baked casserole dishes. When we come back, it's time to make the topping of the crumble. So stay with me. I'm coming back with some delicious berry rhubarb crumble. So we already have the strawberries and the raspberries and the rhubarb together. And we have tossed that with sugar. And then we diluted some cornstarch. That'll be the thickener right there. Now let's talk about the topping. We're going to use quick oats, not instant oats, but quick oats. A cup of that, a cup of flour. We're going to have some kosher salt. And it's interesting how baking nowadays are bringing in kosher salt instead of the more refined salt. And of course, we're going to add some brown sugar. Because if you say any type of crisp or crumble, it's got to have some brown sugar in there. Now if you get to your brown sugar and you notice there's it's kind of chunky and hard balls. A great cooking tip is just take a wedge of apple and put that apple in the plastic bag with the brown sugar. And in two days, it will be nice and soft. Now you can use either your regular mixer on this or you can use what I'm using is my food processor to start. So we've mixed that around pretty easily. Now what I want to do is I want to start adding the butter. We're adding the butter just the same way that we would nice cold pieces. We're going to add it just the same way we would in a pie. So let's just add a few of those diced pieces. And I prefer to use unsalted butter when I'm baking because we've already added the salt for the chemical reaction. So real quick on the butter. We don't want to do it too much. And then you'll take this off and you'll do some more. 
So a little work of love. But again, the butter needs to be very, very cold. So here we go. We'll put in a little bit more. And when we go on break, I'll continue to finish that off for you. I've made up some whipped cream, homemade whipped cream. It's also really nice if you want to use like a lemon gelato on top. And for those chocolate lovers, I haven't forgotten about you. I found a great, it's called Love Crunch. It's an organic granola and has chocolate chunks in it and, and dried red berries. And that makes a really nice addition to the crumble. So I'm going to put the topping on. It's going to go in the oven at 350 just for about an hour. And when it comes out, it's going to look so golden delicious. When I come back, I'll plate up and get Wendy's dessert ready for I think you all heard it earlier that Judy made this just for me. So <laughs> I know you said this was for Charlie. But I, I sorry, think I'm Charlie. Say, sorry, I Charlie. I love it. Sorry, Charlie. You get the little portion. So we have that berry raspberry rhubarb yeah. with the. T with Cr uh, crumble topping and of course homemade whipped cream and Wendy it's really fun if you want if you're a chocolate lover yeah. to throw a, a little handful of the chocolate granola so I just serve it on a narrow dish and it really makes a really fancy presentation with some fresh berries on the side a little bit of the chocolate granola so dig in and, uh, let and me I have think. to say that tip that you gave about putting in the apple when you have a, the brown, brown sugar. sugar what a great idea works like a charm don't we always have a little yes. bit of hard brown sugar and you don't want to run out in the middle of baking to get some more so it it's better if it sits a day or two but even within a few hours it'll moisten it up and I have to tell you you can get this recipe by going to our mysuncoast.com slash dining page you got it I got find it. out all about the restaurants lots of more reviews travel culinary articles and great everything tips. and great, great tips, tips too